another amen i welcome everyone tonight in jesus name victory night what are you victory for you in jesus name father we thank you for bringing us together thank you for your people thank you for all the workers here and everywhere the ones we know and the ones we don't know we're asking oh lord everyone will partake of your blessing tonight in jesus name strengthen your people that we will win in every battle of our lives in jesus name confirm it in every life in jesus name we pray we're looking at first samuel chapter 17 i read verse 10 and the philistines said i defy the armies of israel this day give me a man that will that we may fight together verse 21 in verse 21 for israel and the philistine the philistines had put the battle in array army against army verse 25 in verse 25 and the men of israel said have you seen this man that is come up surely to defy israel you see come up and it shall be that the man who kills him the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And then in verse 26, and David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine? And taketh the and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but i come to thee in the name of the lord of hosts the god of the armies of israel whom thou hast defied this day somebody tell me this day it will happen in your life this day will the lord deliver thee into mine hand and i will smite thee and take thy head from thee and i will give the carcasses of the host of the philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is god there is a god in israel through your life the community will know there is God who is still alive. Verse 52. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down. They will always fall by the way of Saharaim even unto Gaz and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. I'm sure we are familiar with this chapter. Almost every reader of the Bible knows the story of David and Goliath. And yet there's a lot here 
that many people still need to understand. The message tonight is overcoming the great enemies of the indestructible church. The church unconquerable, the church unstoppable, the church indestructible, overcoming the great enemies of the indestructible church. I want you to note to start with that what David faced here was not a personal enemy. It was an enemy of Israel, the enemy of the chosen race, of the chosen nation. But this Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, thought he could do something to decimate and destroy and put to naught the nation that God had chosen. But with God's pronouncements and the great prophecies on Israel, we know Israel was and Israel is indestructible. With God's plan and God's purpose, whatever Goliath may rise up, we know that God's nation, Israel, cannot be destroyed. With the covenant that God had made with Abraham, and with the revelation that God gave Moses concerning Israel, we know Israel is indestructible. With the promises of Christ that he is coming, again, is coming through uh, Judah, Judah in Israel. And Christ was still to come. And Judah being part of Israel, we know that Israel could not be destroyed. The nation was indestructible. As we think about the nation, we also think about the church. The same is true of the church. Christ's pronouncements make us understand that the church is indestructible. Christ's prophecies on the church makes us know that whatever Goliath rises up, he will only destroy himself the church is indestructible. With Christ's promises to the church, I go to prepare a place for you, and I'm coming back to take you home. We know that church will remain until it comes. Christ's church is indestructible. With the power of Christ, all power is given unto me on earth and in heaven. We know the church is indestructible with the purpose God has for the church, that he wants the church to be militant and to be strong and to be triumphant and to give the gospel to every creature with that purpose and plan. We know that the church is indestructible with the predicted return of Christ to the church that is going to take that church to himself. That's the bride of Christ. We know the church is indestructible. We're coming to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And we're reading from verse 18. Matthew 16 verse 18 and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it somebody said amen, amen. and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. From that we know the key is in our hand, and the victory is in our hand already. We're going to defeat every Goliath in Jesus' name. The message tonight, remember again, overcoming the great enemies of the indestructible church. 
three things we're looking at. Number one, the war against a menacing, defiant Goliath. The war against a menacing, defiant Goliath. Number two, the weapon of mighty deliverance from Goliath. The weapon of mighty deliverance from Goliath. You are delivered already. Point number three, our watchfulness against a more deadly Goliath. Our watchfulness against a more deadly Goliath. We're coming to number one, the war against a menacing defiant Goliath. For Samuel chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 4. For Samuel chapter 17, we're reading from verse 4. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. A war ensued. A battle raged. The Philistines were going to fight against the Israelites. And they had a purpose, a goal in mind. I'll tell you, but let's look at verse 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? And not I a Philistine? And ye servants of Tosol, choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. I just want you to realize that the man that will weep Goliath was not even there in the midst of the army of Israel. They looked around and they couldn't see anybody, even from Saul to the least of them or the greatest of them. And they couldn't find anybody. But don't worry, the man is coming. I said, the man is coming. He had just been anointed in the previous chapter, and that anointing is not in vain. The anointing will break every yoke. Verse 9, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And then in verse 10, and the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel. This day, give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. You think about Israel that told Samuel, give us a king that will go with us to battle like all the nations. If you give us a king, you fulfill your ministry. We'll be all right with you. And Samuel said, but why? God is your ruler. God is your judge. And God is your leader. They said, no. We we'll want a king. Now eventually they got the king. And when they saw the king, looking at his stature and looking at his posture, higher and taller than everybody else, they said, that's the man. That's the man. What if we didn't ask for a king? What if we were not persistent? We must have a king. Long live the king. And eventually now, they came to the battlefield. And this is the reason they asked Saul to be their king. And Saul was afraid, greatly afraid and dismayed. He couldn't face the enemy. The choice we make in ourselves will not give us the victory, but God himself will give us the victory. Verse 23, in verse 23, and as he talked with them, 
Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath, by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. Verse 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and was so afraid, all the men of Israel. Goliath, as I said, was not David's personal enemy. You see, there are many of us Christians, almost all the Christians in the land. We only fight a personal problem, a personal enemy, a personal person uh, that is uh, challenging us. We are not looking at the possibility of being raised up to defend the church, to defend the nation against the enemy of the nation. As you look at David, he wanted to confront the enemy of Israel, the enemy of God's chosen race, God's chosen nation. Goliath had a plan. And Goliath had a purpose against the nation of Israel. Number one, to defeat Israel. If I kill that man, then you will be our slaves, our servants. You'll be in subjection to us. Number one, to defeat the nation. Not to defeat uh, a boy, a man, a soldier, the nation. Number two, to decrease Israel. That is, in this battle, Goliath made up his mind. All these multitudes of Israelites that God had promised that they'll be as the sand on the seashore and as the stars of heaven, I will decimate them. I will decrease their number. Number three, he had a goal to destroy he just wanted to finish and destroy the army of Israel so that they'll be vulnerable. There'll be nobody to fight any other battle. This one is going to be a decisive war and he was going to destroy. Number four is to diminish their authority. Diminish their authority. Having authority over each of their tribes and standing that nobody will be able to erode into the authority of the leaders of every tribe and the authority of the king over the whole nation. He said, I'm going to weaken that. I'm going to weaken this nation. And I'm going to weaken these people that they say, we have God, we have God. I'll diminish their authority. Number five is to debase them. And to show to all the other gentle nations around, don't honor them, don't respect them, don't fear them. What are they? What can they do? Only one man, Goliath, destroyed them and scattered them. He wanted to, dis to debase them. Number six is to defame them. The fame that had gone out, that uh, Rahab said, when the news of your coming came, we're all afraid, and we knew that God had given you the land, and all of us, our hearts melted. Um, God said, I'm going to reverse all that. Number seven, to dominate the nation. You will be our slaves. We'll have dominion over you, and we will oppress you. You're going to become uh, enslaved people. The enemy has not changed. Satan has not changed. His ultimate goal is that he will destroy the church of the living God. It's not a personal enemy as such now. He's facing, he feels that one man is too small to face. He feels that one little family is too small to face. He's going for the big catch. He wants to destroy the church. But this church is indestructible. 
The church of the living God is built and founded on the rock of ages, and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it in Jesus' name. Actually, since Lucifer fell, and then the promise had come of his future going into hellfire, he went to the Garden of Eden. And then he waged war with Eve and Adam, overcame them. And now he's come to the world in great wrath and fury. He wants to destroy the people who are saved by Christ, his arch enemy. But his defeat, like Golas, defeat is sure. His defeat is certain. And any other personality that follows after Satan, wanting to fulfill the goal of Satan, those personalities are destroyed already in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 3. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name and is still alive. He'll fight every battle against your life, every battle against your family, every battle against the local church, every battle against the universal church. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Look at verse 6, thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. He'll dash them in pieces. In the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them, and that rose up against thee. Pharaoh rose up against the Israelites, and uh, now Moses is saying uh, it was not just Israel. He rose up against God. He said, Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. This is treating for our learning. And all the enemies of God, enemies of the gospel, will be consumed as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright as an heap, and the heaps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My loss shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You see the plan, you see the purpose, you see the pursuit. Thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as ledge in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? The idols cannot match our living God. All the gods of the Philistines and the gods of the Ammonites, Samurites, Jebusites, all the gods put together, they'll be burnt in the fire of God's wrath. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Wonders will happen in your life. Your enemies will be surprised that God has not changed. Anyone that comes against you, comes against the church, is coming against the Almighty God, and the defeat is ready stamped. I didn't hear my people say amen. Second Kings chapter 19. Second Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 8. These enemies, they never learn their lesson. One is defeated, another one is defeated, then another one will rise up. But no matter what season, what era, 
what dispensation, Old or New Testament, they rise up, they're defeated in Jesus' name. Second Kings chapter 19, verse 8. So Rabshake returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libnam, for he had heard that he was departed from Lakish. And when he had say of Tahaka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he is come out to fight against thee. He sent messengers again unto Ezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Ezekiah, king of Judah, the rising up again against Judah? Impossible. Nobody can defeat Judah. And nobody will defeat you. And as we hide under the banner of Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, nobody will destroy or defeat you in Jesus' name. But he sent to Hezekiah saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hands of, the, of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands by destroying them utterly. And shall thou be delivered? Shalt thou be delivered? I'm asking you now, shall thou be delivered? I am asking our church, shalt thou be delivered? I'm asking the church of the living God in our land, shall we be delivered? Yeah. Amen. We're delivered already. Let me just show you the conclusion of that story. Verse 35, verse 35. And it came to pass that night. And it is coming to pass this night. In your life, in our life. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out. How many angels? Tell me. Only one. That the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians. Look at this. And hundred, first call, and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, say it aloud, they were all dead corpses. One angel, in fact, Ezekiah did not have to fight. This battle is not yours. It is the Lord's battle. And just one angel will destroy 185,000 of them in a moment of time in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading here from verse 12. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 12. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Those enemies, thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. You didn't hear that one. Do you believe it? Do you accept it? They that war against, say me. Say it now. They that war against me shall be as nothing and shall be as a sin of naught. Don't look at their stature. Don't look at their boasting. Don't look at their height. Don't look at their weapon. You are a victor in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, he shall roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Against your enemies, you will prevail. 
God will prevail. He will grant you the victory in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 12 of Acts. Acts chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. He had a lot to do. He wasn't doing that to govern, to protect the people. It's ruling over and to do what they expected when he was appointed king over them. He left all that and he wanted to face just the church. His doom was very near. Look at verse 20. And Herod, that same Herod, was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But when but they came with one accord to him, and having made blasters, the king's chamberlain, their friend, they desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon his said day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God, and not of a man. And immediately, and immediately, tell me, tell me, and immediately, the angel of the Lord did what? I can't hear you. Say it with confidence. Smote him. You see, he stretched forth a sand to destroy the indestructible. He stretched forth in his sand. He said he was going to obliterate, eradicate, wipe out the church of the living God, the church that is built on a rock and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Look at his end. All the enemies of the church, indestructible, this is how they will end. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. Verse 24, everybody, one, two, three, go. Say that again. What they wanted to kill, what they wanted to destroy, the word of the law of God grew and multiplied you'll be going stronger you'll be going higher and the lord will grant us grant you grant me grant the church the victory in jesus name point number two now the weapon of mighty deliverance from goliath these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more in Jesus' name. And the Goliath that you see, that you hear, and you tremble for, you will see him no more in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five small stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hand and his, he drew near the Philistine and the Philistine came on and he drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield before him. Verse 45. In verse 45, then said David to the Philistine, 
thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come. Somebody there, I come. Somebody there, I come. I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, your victory is sure. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Let's make it a little personal and come back and come home. Here is our church. I'm not talking about the church universal now, or the church invisible, or the church nationwide, or the church, uh, the church all over the world. I'm talking about deeper life now. Is God in deeper life? Look at your years. And now, if anything comes against you, the outcome as God is going to protect you and God is going to defend you, we know that God is in the church. Now your community will know that God is with you and in the church. The water will not drown you. The fire will not burn you. The difficulties will not crush you. Goliath will not make your body meet for the fowls of the air in Jesus' name. That situation will not kill you. It will not destroy you. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. The weapon of mighty deliverance from Goliath. David defeated Goliath with a belittled, despised weapon. Each of us, like David, can defeat the enemy. I can. I can. I will. I must. What I can do, I must do. And what I can do, I will do. You can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ. Say it now. Who strengthens me. You'll overcome. How did David overcome? Number one. Compassion for the fainting. Compassion for the fainting. He looked at them all those Israelites, they were shivering. They were trembling. Nobody could do anything. And it's like the nation is going to be run down. But he adds, number one, compassion for the fainting. Look at verses 23 and 24. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion. And the Philistines of at the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. And David had them, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and they were so afraid. That was stirred up the courage of David, compassion. For the fainting. All the people around us are fainting. They think that the enemy is so strong and they think their problem is so great they cannot overcome. If you are going to overcome for yourself, for your family, for the church, you must have number one, compassion for the fainting. Point number two, conversation with the faithful. 
conversation with the faithful. The people were there on the battlefield. They were faithful. They wanted to fight. Only that their strength could not match the enemy. Look at verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up surely to defy Israel? Is he come up? And it shall be that the man that killeth him, that the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him. Conversation. You see, you cannot be a lone ranger if you're going to be an overcomer. You have good ideas and you have good intention and you have strength and you have courage. Discourse with the faithful cheer and let the conversation of the faithful strengthen you more. Number three, confrontation of the family. The confrontation of the family. If you are going to overcome and thank God you will overcome. You must know that your family members may confront you. Why are you doing that? Why are you going there? Why are you so zealous? Why are you thinking that you can do this? You want to waste your life. You're too young for this. Confrontation of the family. Verse 28. In verse 28, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake to, unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I not done? You have not seen anything yet. You see, I am prognosing. You see, I am getting involved in what doesn't concern me. What do you think I have done? Is there not a cause, Eliab? Is there not a cause that I was born at such a time like this? Is there not a cause that I was anointed in chapter 16 and this is chapter 17? Is there not a cause that God said, you are not the man? And God told Samuel and he said, look not on his stature. He is not the man. I have rejected him. Is, that not, is there not a cause that I was chosen? Chosen is that is there not a cause that I came at the right time to fight the enemy of the nation? Is there not a cause in your life? How did you get saved? When did you get saved? Where did you get saved? When did you come to the church? When did you become a member of a church like this? When did you become a worker? And what is it God has appointed you to now in the church and the anointing upon your life? Is there not a cause we will see the glory at the end of this chapter? This thing going on now, the chapter that the church is going through, and the chapter that your family is going through, will see the glory at the end in Jesus' name. Number three, confrontation of the family. Number four, consecration in fullness. Consecration in fullness. If we're going to overcome, and thank God we're going to overcome. Any overcomer there? This is how to overcome. Consecration in its fullness. Verse 32. And David said unto Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his shield. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, 
and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of the mouth out of his mouth and when he rose against me I caught him by the beard and smote him and slew him thy servant slew both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seen he has defied the armies of the living God this uncircumcised Philistine this enemy that rose up newly shall be defeated and totally confounded in Jesus' name. Number five, confidence not in the flesh. Confidence not in the flesh. Verse 38, and Saul and David with his armor, and he put uh, an element of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail, and David guarded his sword upon his armor, and he tried their search to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this. Will win the battle without the arms of flesh. I cannot go with this. This one belongs to you. I've not tried this before. What I know is faith. What I know is anointing. What I know is the unction. But this heavy sin, I've not tried this before, for I have not proved them. And David put them of him. Your confidence will not be in the flesh in Jesus' name. Number six, the confession of faith. Confession of faith. Don't let what's of unbelief ever come out of your mouth. Confession of faith. Verse 45, Then David said unto the Philistine, That comest unto me, with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come unto thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild bees of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Is God with you there? At home, is God with you? In the night, is God with you? He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So you can boldly say, The Lord is my helper. What will a man do unto me? Number seven, commitment of all the followers. Commitment of all the followers. Look at verse 51. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and he drew it out of the shares thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. Then when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, tell me, say it. It will happen in your family. It will happen in your local church. The things that are trying to drown the people of God in your ministry, the Lord is going to make them flee away in Jesus' name. And, it, and the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. 
and the wounded of the Philistines fell, they fell, they fell, they fell down by the way of Sherim, even unto Gad and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. They spoiled their tents. Courage came to the other people of Judah and of uh, Israel when they saw the Philistine, the Goliath, he was defeated. And courage will come into your heart. Strength will come into your heart. Read that story over and over again and put yourself in the place where David was standing. As God granted David the victory, he will grant you the victory. He has granted you the victory. You will testify of the victory in Jesus' name. Point number three, a watchfulness against a more deadly Goliath. A watchfulness against a more deadly Goliath. This is serious matter now that many people have not thought about that there is a, godly, a, a more deadly Goliath that faced the people of God at that time individually and collectively. A more deadly Goliath that is confronting even people today. And we're going to look at this more deadly Goliath in the life of David. And we're going to see how he did and how he approached them. We've seen how he defeated the normal, ordinary Philistine champion Goliath. Now we're going to see how he did for the Goliath we're going to talk about. I want you to write the word, the name Goliath, vertically, from top to down. Goliath, G O L I A T H. In Romans chapter 8, I'm reading here from verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You'll be a conqueror. You'll be more than a conqueror. The new day Goliath, more deadly Goliath, will not destroy you in Jesus' name. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. G is greed. Greed. Now you understand, David had some needs. And now we look at him in 1 Samuel chapter 27. 1 Samuel chapter 27, I'm reading from verse 8. And David and his men went up and invaded Gesh the Geshurites and the Gezrites and the Amalekites. For those nations were of old the inhabitants of the land, as thou goest to show, even unto the land of Egypt. And David smote the land, they didn't offend him. And Moses and, and David smote the land. They were not even waiting or expecting him. And David smote the land, and he left neither man nor woman alive. All the men killed them. All the women, he killed them. Why? He took away their sheep and their oxen and their asses and the camels and the apparel and returned again to Akish. Greed. Wanting to have, wanting to take what belongs to other people. And that's what you see 
in our land today. They, they are not satisfied with what they have. They want to take what belongs to other people. They are for greedy gain. Look at verse 10. And Achish said, Whither have ye made a road today? And David said, Against the south of Judah. That's not true, David. And against the south of Jehamilatites. That's not true, David. And against the south of the Canaanites. You have not mentioned the place where you have been. Verse 11. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to girls, saying, Lest they should tell on us. Lest they should tell on us. What do people do in their greed? They steal, they possess, they get rid of other people bury other people and they don't save anybody alive that will tell on them and there are people who call themselves christians that greedily they try to take what doesn't belong to them and anybody that will tell on them they will make sure that either they even drive them away from the church or they drive them away from where they can open their mouth to say anything. This is a more deadly Goliath Greek. We're coming to Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. And I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah 56 verse 10 is watch men are blind they are all ignorant they are all dumb dogs they cannot bark sleeping lying down loving to slumber yea they are greedy dogs which can never have enough as you look at people in churches any church Maybe our church too. There are those who have the love of money to the point they just want more and more and more. Whatever God has given them, no, it's not enough. If they don't have it legally and normally, they will have it illegally, abnormally, and they will steal. They're greedy, greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand they all look to their own way everyone for his gain everyone what can i get out of it what can i gain out of this from his quarter to offense offense as we look at the life of david just like many of us we think of Goliath as a person. And that's the only challenge we have. We think of somebody is trying to take our land. is trying to take our property. is trying to take something. But we do not look at the other Goliath that is out to destroy, out to defeat, out to denigrate, out to desecrate us. First Chronicles, I'm reading from chapter 21. First Chronicles, chapter 21, and we're reading from verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And provoked David to number Israel. He didn't see any problem in this one. He saw problem in Goliath. We're going to bring Goliath down. But look at this now. Satan sneaks in, into his thought, into his mind, to do something he shouldn't have done. Verse 7, in verse 7, and God was displeased with this thing. Therefore he smote Israel, and David said unto God, I have sinned greatly, because I have done this thing. 
to smite Israel. That's the intention of Goliath. And whatever Satan will use, if he uses Goliath, and Goliath is not able to make it, and Goliath died, is going to use greed, is going to use offense. Look at verse 14. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel. Tell me. Tell me out aloud. That's more dangerous. That's more deadly. That's more serious than what Goliath was intending to do. 70,000 men died because of this offense. In Matthew chapter, two, chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 13 verse 41 The man of and the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity. Somebody may overcome a physical Goliath. If he does not overcome the tendency for offense and if also is offensive in the kingdom of God and he offends and offends and offends at last if he dies in that condition although he might have conquered a physical Goliath this one is more deadly he shall be taken out of the kingdom them that offend and do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of tears. Number three is L lost. Lost. Lost make war against the soul. Just like when I had made war against Israel. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. 11 dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul war against the soul the lost and you remember what brought david down that brought a stain upon his life lost in proverbs chapter 6 proverbs chapter 6 reading from verse 25 proverbs chapter 6 verse 25 lost not after her after her beauty in thine heart neither let her take thee with her high leads for by means of a warish woman a man is brought to a piece of bread and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt can one go upon hot coals and his feet not the bond, so he that goes to his neighbor's wife, he that goes into his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her shall not be innocent. And then he tells us in verse 32, but whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that Doeth each destroys his own soul. He that doeth each destroys his own soul. I idleness. Idleness. In Proverbs chapter twenty-four. Proverbs chapter twenty-four. Bastachi. 
Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30. I went by the field of, his, of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. The wall of protection, the wall of security was broken down. Idleness. Second Samuel. We're looking at chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11. We're looking at verse 1. In Second Samuel chapter 11 verse 1. And it came to pass. After the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. The captain tarried still at Jerusalem. The warrior tarried still at Jerusalem. The chief host tarried still at Jerusalem. Idleness brings problems. If David had gone to the battlefield, as he had always gone, if he had not stayed behind, what happened from verse 2 would not have happened. Verse 2, and it came to pass in an even tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon and David said and so the story goes on idleness makes the devil to make somebody's mind his workshop where he devises evil imagines evil and eventually commits evil. A anger. Anger. To overcome Goliath in the physical, that's commendable. But to watch against greed, against offenses, against lust, against idleness against anger second samuel chapter 12 i read from verse 5 second samuel chapter 12 verse 5 and david's anger greatly was greatly kindled against the man and he said to nathan as the lord liveth the man that has done this sin shall surely die Nathan had told him a story. You know the story. It was a parable. It was an illustration. And that illustration stirred up the anger. You see, those who are not able to control their temper, they hear this has happened, they hear that has happened, they have not even had the conclusion. Anger, anger will come up. And then he shall restore the lamp for food because he did the sin and because he had no pity and nathan said unto david thou art the man you are angry thou art the man you are the guilty one matthew chapter 7 verse 1 judge not that ye be not judged for with what judgment ye judge ye shall be judged and with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you again why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye and considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye in the story nathan told david the man 
had a ewe lamb or had many lambs, sheep, and he took what belongs to this other man, the only ewe lamb. And it was about animals. But now what David had done, he had killed Uriah, the husband of Beersheba, had committed adultery with Beersheba, had even taken her to his house to become his wife. And he had written a letter of assassination through that same man. Give it to Joab. Look at all that he has done. And when his simple story was told of somebody taking a lamb and dressing it for a visitor, he became angry. Anger. Check up the anger before you allow it to come out. David had no justification. He defeated that other Goliath. But this other Goliath is not able to destroy. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Whatever you think other people are doing, don't criticize, don't judge, don't get angry. Because you have a beam of wood in your own eye and you are looking at a speck, at, at a moat of a wood in another person's eye. Be not hasty to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. T, transgression, transgression. Eventually David realized Look at the Psalm of David, Psalm 51. Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, we're looking at verse 3. Psalm 51, looking at verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. Transgression. The person who transgresses, the person who goes away from the norm, away from the law, away from the commandments of God. Not that he didn't know, he knew better. But now he says, my transgression is always before me and my sin before me against thee thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. He had to repent, he had to confess, he had to plead and pray for forgiveness and cleansing. Verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy spirit, Holy Spirit, from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, after my restoration, then, after the, renewness, the renewal of my heart, then will I teach transgressors thy way. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Transgressors, 
should understand that defeating the physical Goliath, that's great, but that's not enough. You must defeat greed, offense, lusts, idleness, anger, transgression. And it's good that David at this time prayed so that he could have the transgression cleansed away and he could have a free heart once again. In Proverbs chapter, 15, chapter 13, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15. Good understanding give it favor but the way of transgressors is hard and you'll discover after that event and that act of uh, David the way became hard for him we're coming to second Samuel again H hypocrisy hypocrisy this is the Goliath that faces everyone today greed offense lusts idleness anger transgressions hypocrisy let's look at the hypocrisy of the man look at Second Samuel chapter 12 verse 1 Second Samuel chapter 12 verse 1 And the Lord sent Nathan unto David And he came unto him And he said unto him There were two men in one city The one rich and the other poor you know the story, verse 7. In verse 7, well, verse 5, and David's anger was kindled against the man. And he, he said unto Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that has done this sin shall surely die. Before he dies, he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Because he did the sin and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, What hypocrisy is this? Thou art the man. Romans chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, Thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. We must overcome that tendency of doing something, hiding it, protecting our own shortcomings, and criticizing, condemning other people. Wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Verse 2. But who are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things? Or thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them that do such things, and thou and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Well, eventually, David realized himself, and he went to the throne of grace, and the Lord forgave him. I pray every one of us will look away from the physical Goliath. That one is now already. I said that one is now already.
but look at your life you find greed there or face there lost there idleness there anger transgressions hypocrisies Romans chapter 2 verse 21 thou therefore that teachest another teachest thou not thyself thou that preachest a man should not steal dost thou steal thou that seest a man should not commit adultery dost thou commit adultery thou that abhorrest idols dost thou commit sacrilege you rob you steal from the house of God, even though you appear outwardly sanctimonious. Verse 23, Thou that seest him, thou that boastest of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is reach you may the lord strengthen us empower us equip us give us strength against every form of goliath in life in jesus name ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might you will be strong I will be strong. And when these things come, now that we have the secret and we know what the devil may use, something more deadly than Goliath, we are going to overcome. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, I will stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And have been on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always, we will pray. I will pray. We will pray, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching, 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 greed will not enter. Watching offense will not take over your life. Watching lust will not draw you away from holiness. I didn't hear the amen I waited for. Idleness will not destroy you. Anger will not find a place in your heart. Transgression will not find a place in your life. Hypocrisy, God forbid, in your life in Jesus' name. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Watching and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We must watch. I will watch. We must fight. I will fight. We must conquer. You have conquered already. We'll watch, we'll fight, and conquer in order to reign. To reign as Christ, to reign with Christ, the son of David, how he conquered, we're going to conquer. And we shall reign with Christ. Where is the one to reign? We shall reign with Christ. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name.
Let's rise so up and pray unto the Lord. Let the Lord strengthen you and make you watch against the deadly Goliath so that this kind of Goliath that took over the life of David eventually until he had to bend down and roll in the dust and pray and get restoration, this sin will not defeat us in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray.